Hello everyone, hi and welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. To know more about this video equity research, watch the video till the end and also if you're new to this channel then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon that's given below. Welcome everyone and today's topic uh, is equity research. We are going to do a complete beginner's guide. We're going to study uh, various nitty gritties about how equity research plays massive role in investment banking. So what exactly equity research is all about? As you can see, uh, there is a chart or you can see a picture which says that you know within equity research from what happens what is corporate finance what is private equity analyst does what are the opportunities the buy side firm investment bank analysts and so on and so forth so we'll study this in a much more detailed format first of all let me make you understand that see equity research uh, primarily means analyzing a company's financials where you do some ratio analysis and you forecast the financials in excel uh, with the help of uh, financial modeling okay and post factor you explore the scenarios with the objective of making buy and sell stock investment recommendation so an equity research analyst always discusses their research and analyst in their equity research reports which is known as and in this in-depth topic you know equity research will discuss nuts and bolts of complete equity research paradigm now what exactly is equity research all about let's study that first first of all what exactly an analyst or an equity research guy does he performs the valuation of the listed companies why uh, this valuation is done to analyze whether a buy call is should be taken or sell call should be taken that is the final agenda post facto research uh, so for doing the valuation you need to do research on the economics and industry parameters what is going to be your VAC and other parameters that you're going to use for valuation you do some fundamental analysis like ratio analysis and and, and uh, anything that is uh, more relevant for buy or sell options uh, you determine the project revenues and the profits of the company and post facto valuation using the DCF that is discounted cash flow technique or relative valuation technique you compare the fair market value with the market prices and post facto based on the relations you find whether it should be a sell option or a buy option so if the fair value is less fair value means the value that you determine with the help of the uh, valuation that you do if that is less than the market value that means you should sell it ideally because why do you want to invest into something which is already overpriced and if the fair value is greater than the market price that means that this should be the price and this is the price so if this price is 100 and if this is 50 that means there is a margin of 50 that you can earn so that's why it's a buy option that you should take well uh, let's start with some of the points equity research first is all about finding the valuation remember this of a listed company now, listed companies trades on stock exchange like nyse nasdaq etc now once you have the company uh, under consideration you look at what their economic aspects okay like gdp growth rates market size of the industry and the competition aspects over there once you understand the economic uh, economics behind the business you need to do a financial statement analysis that's called third financial statement analysis okay fourth now on the third part of, when you're doing the financial analysis you have to be of the historical balance sheet cash flows income statement to basically form an opinion that you know how the company did in the past fourth based on the management's expectation historical performances and the industry competition project the financial statements like you need to project fs uh, like balance sheets uh, income statement and uh, cfs that's a cash flow statement of the company which is also called in in the part of the financial modeling now fifth is you need to use the equity valuation model like dcf or relative valuation or some of the part of the valuation of the company you you can use any uh, technique now again if the you need to calculate after that the fair value okay fair price based on the models that has been given 
and you need to compare the fair prices with the current market price so the seventh will be if your fair price is less than your current market price then you basically sell okay and if your fair price is greater than your cmp then buy i told you the reason also now let me make you understand what are the role or what a role an equity research personnel plays in a equity research company well equity research plays a very critical role because that fills the information gap between the buyers and the sellers of the shares second the reason is that the all levels that is individual and institutional may not have the resources or the capabilities to analyze every stock so that is why equity research is necessary see additionally full information is not provided by the management but due to which further inefficiencies are created and stock trades below above the fair value okay fourth equity research analyst spends a lot of time and energy and its expertise to analyze the stock follow the news talking to the management and then provide the estimate of the stock valuation also uh, the equity research they try to identify the value stocks out of the massive ocean of stocks and it helps the buyer to generate profits now what is the typical hierarchy in equity research firm so we will start with uh, a typical hierarchy that goes uh, as an equity research uh, firm starts with the uh, head of equity uh, and then post that you know thereafter then there are analysts a senior covering different sector now each analyst mostly covers around uh, 10 to 15 companies in specific sectors Third, each senior analyst may be supported by an associate who is uh, in turn may be supported by a couple of junior analysts. Let me show you the hierarchy. As you can see, there is an head of equity research, which has been, uh, he actually takes care of the senior analysts. The senior analysts below that, then there are associates. Those associates reports data of the junior analysts. And uh, this is how the hierarchy exactly works in the equity research part now i will make you understand what exactly role is of the head of research first head of research they act as a key member to manage the equity research analyst team so they provide the team with leadership okay most important part they provide with a leadership coaching guidance to ensure that the brokerage goals and objectives are met Second, they oversee the research reports, publications, and its editing as well as they monitor the process of analysis and brokerage recommendation. Third, they ensure that the adequate support is provided to sales and trading teams. Fourth, they contribute uh, to equities by providing expert level inputs. I mean, that is mostly for the overall strategy, goals, initiatives and and budget now responsible they are responsible for analysts hiring process compensation development performance management and so on and so forth they also liaison with the uh, with the fund managers and the research firms uh, at the same time so that is the entire role of the head then there comes the senior or analyst Now, what does senior analyst does? See, see, typically an equity research senior analyst would cover a sector with not more than B15, you know, 8 to, sorry, not B8 to 16 stocks. Okay, coverage implies tracking the stock acti actively. Senior analyst tries to bring maximum companies under coverage in the sector and he or she tracks initiating the coverage. Second, many senior analysts, they cover companies that investor may want to invest in. And these companies are like, you know, high market 
cap uh, high market capitalization companies or the or the ones with higher trading volumes and there could be cases where investors wants to invest in small cap and mid cap companies with fewer analyst coverage third one of the most important responsibilities of the senior analyst is to come up with the quarterly results updates okay now here result summary expectations and performance against those expectations updating the forecast all that comes into picture or uh, talking to the clients by side and show showcasing their calls on the stocks they have to diligently communicate buy and sell recommendation of stocks additionally they have to articulate clearly why a certain stock should be included in the portfolio that is very important now to update the sales team dealing and trading team about the latest news in the sector and the company and keep them updated with the brokerage view in the same fifth they are attending conferences co conference uh, calls uh, for important company updates results and so on and so forth they attend also attend the trade shows uh, meet the company management and supply meeting and so on and so forth that's what senior analyst does then there comes associate well the primary job of an associate is to support the senior analyst you need to provide support to senior analyst i'll just write sa uh, an associate has a prior experience of closely around 3 years in the similar industry and they are they are updating the financial model okay verifying the data and prepare the valuation models they are working on various clients request uh, of the data of, of the industry analytics that goes in they prepare the equity research reports and they work on the client uh, requests they participate in the meeting and the the call with clients on the stock under coverage now what are the responsibilities of junior analyst well the main responsibility of the junior analyst is to support the associate in every format majority of the work is done by the junior analyst and it is related to data and excel so on and so forth also the junior analyst may be involved in doing the primary research coordinating with the clients and so on and so forth now they also do maintaining the industry uh, database at the same time charts and uh, graphs and financial models and so on and so forth well this was all the responsibility part how does the typical day runs in an equity research firm well previously companies like you know jp morgan clsa uh, clsa india as an equity research analyst they cover companies like indian oil and gas sectors with stocks like uh, ongc bpcl uh, hpcl gale and so on and so forth how does a typical day runs in an equity research firm well first of all uh, you check your mails from the traders and the salesperson then you check the stock markets asian markets because those are the ones that open first you check all the news related to your sector that's the first thing that you do then 7:30 to 8 are are basically you know morning meetings is nothing but the formal discussion of the recommendations that goes before the market opens along with the sales trading team so that is a time uh, in, in in this morning meetings all the analysts presents their view on the key developments in the sectors along with with the head of the research or equities uh, presenting their views on the general markets then at nine o'clock closely around you follow the market look at the key developments that are going on in your sector you try to rationalize if there is any 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 rapid stock price movements or not at 10 o'clock you perform your regular research analyst uh, duties like client requests financial model updates you follow the news you keep a check a close check on things at 11 you do, you do the discussion with the buy side clients for the explanation of the research calls continue doing your regular maintenance work so that's that's the thing at 3:30 p.m you know you capture uh, the market movements that are happening under the coverage for the closure and check the, if there is any anything that the client should know and work accordingly 4 p.m you work on the new research publication okay so 
work on the new research piece for the publication next day or in the coming days. Generally, research analyst targets at least one or two research every week. 7.30 to 8 is the time you go home. <laughs> so if there is no earning season, company results, then the typical go home time is 7.30 to 8. However, during the earning seasons, there is no surety when you will reach home. So you need to be fully prepared, the results update report, and keep it ready for your next day. So who pays for equity research? Well, very interesting question that is. For independent, uh, what we call as uh, equity research firms, independent equity research firms do not have a trading and the sales division. They perform financial analyst, uh, analysis with an idea of charging fees on a per report basis also you know equity research you know you, need, you can see equity research versus sales and trading for major equity research firms so first is independent equity research firms second for major equity research firms the fee income is earned by the brokerage trade soft dollars so to understand this in detail let me show you a diagram so this the brokerage firms this are the clients the brokerage firms like investment banks they give investment ideas or, or to mutual funds institutional investors retail investors so so one side is the buy side firms like hedge funds pension funds insurance companies mutual funds okay all of them and on the other side is the sell side firms like jp morgan goldman sachs uh, credit suisse etc so the buy side firms manage their portfolio and they're required to invest their portfolio as for the investments objective investment objective may mandate the, these uh, companies to keep a portion for their assets in stock now in such cases the buy side analyst okay the buy side analyst i am talking so this is not limited just mutual fund hedge funds so many of their companies come into picture so once the buy side analyst has taken the decision of investing in the stocks, the buy side analyst may look forward to executing the trade through the trading division of the sell side firm. So the trading division will in turn charge a commission. The trading division will in turn charge a commission for executing the trade at a lowest price. So the commission is in return basically is the earning of the research firms. Okay. So what exactly is the approach that goes? So uh, what is your work like an equity research professional well equity research so what is your work like as an equity research see equity research analysts follow stocks they make the recommendations you know on on whether to buy or whether to sell or to hold and these security use they they use the fundamental analysis so equity research is a very challenging job where an analyst may be required to spend around at least 12 to 14 hours a day so you need to be prepared for that apart from that the first very thing that you need to take care of while doing a professional analysis is to learn about the uh, the economic parameter affecting the industry the dynamics the competitors and so on and so for example when you are analyzing companies like alibaba you should know about how each and every subdivision of alibaba and and it in its uh, in its competitors so Something like this Alibaba's entity they deal in this kind of uh, companies and they are like PayPal and, and Amazon Google Play and, and so on and so forth so what are the relations you need to understand them first very well okay you should be awesome at the fundamental analysis okay. and uh, the fundamental analysis analysis means performing a ratio analysis okay uh, before you start ratio analysis, you should populate at least five years of uh, financial statements like income statement, balance sheet, cash flows. You should prepare a blank Excel sheet with separate income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. Populate the historical financial statement, uh, balance sheets, and cash flow statements. Okay, so do necessary adjustments for non recurring item, one expense or gains and do the ratio analysis once you have done that you know the company management does not provide future uh, financial projections of the company therefore it is important as a research analyst to project this data and forecasting the financials uh, with the help of the financial model and now once you do that you know valuation is primarily done within uh, with two of the formula one is called the DCF 
second is the relative valuations once you find once your financial model is ready you can perform the discounted cash flows and uh, there is a altogether a, for, a big formula for discounted cash flow technique now when you are doing that you know you for calculating the dcf you need to calculate the future cash flow uh, fcff as discounted in class handbook uh, you need you need to use VAC post calculation of the capital structure find the enterprise value of the firm uh, of, uh, of the firm after deduction of the net debts from the same to find the equity value and post that you know there is a buy and sell is decided now relative valuation is based on comparing the valuation of the companies under consideration with the valuation of the other firms so so these these kind of you know multiples uh, relative valuations are been taken. The common approach is like you know you need to identify the you need to identify the comparables uh, based on the businesses market caps and other other filters that you need to do identify a suitable valuation multiple to be used for the business use an average valuation multiple to find the valuation of the company and then you suggest whether it is overvalued or undervalued now once you have prepared the financial modeling and the fair valuation of the company you need to communicate this to your clients through the thing called research uh, reports now these research report is very professional in nature and is prepared with a lot of course uh, let me show you a, probably a research report you know you can you can visit the link uh, given uh, in, in the article uh, that you can find below uh, from there you can see a research report and you will be able to grab it uh, in terms of how the nitty-gritty goes around now what are the skills that goes in when you are doing the equity research work so here is some of the skills that you require see uh, first MBA is a plus remember this thing not necessary if you're MBA then you have a certain advantage but if you are a graduate you should not get disheartened you have a chance if you prove your interest in finance you uh, can have a look uh, can an NGO engineer get into an investment bank so even that is also one topic that will be discussed later see financial discipline is an essential but you must have a strong interest in the financial markets with excellent quantities and analytical skills third you should be fluent in english and uh, and have excellent verbal and written communication skills you should possess uh, intellectual curiosity focus and uh, creativity okay that is a must uh, and have a keen and research instinct with the creative problem solving abilities fifth strong profici proficiency in excel and uh, powerpoint okay a cfa designation this is one of the most important designation that the finance industry respects try to ensure that you take the cfa examination and pass at least uh, a, a couple of levels so a detailed post on the skills required to enter research will be uh, excel skills financial modeling fm then valuations accounting report writing so in-depth understanding can also be uh, done on this uh, which are the top equity research firms let me show you that so as you can see right from Deutsche Bank, Stancy, Credit Suisse, UBS, Barclays, Nomura, City, BNP Paribas and so on and so forth the list goes on got Jeffries and Company, Raymond's and Jeff, Raymond James and Associates and this are all uh, the mid-sized companies so this this are the part of the equity research company database now what exactly is the compensation structure that goes in around when equity research comes into picture see a junior analyst a JA they earn closely around forty five thousand uh, dollars to fifty thousand dollars and associate closely earns around sixty five thousand to ninety thousand dollars for average that's what I'm saying here uh, this depending on the experience additionally they give bonus of 50 to 100 percent of your base salary then there is a senior analyst generally have a base compensation of one lakh twenty five thousand to two lakh fifty thousand dollars and their bonuses may range to two to five thousand two to five times of the base compensation what are the exit opportunities uh, when you quit 
equity research see within equity research firm if you have joined an associate you can move up the ladder to become the senior analyst assuming the full responsibility for the sector coverage later you can move up to becoming the head of the sector coverage now you can also work as private equity analyst so sell side analyst also moves to the private equity domain working as a private equity analyst uh, instead of analyzing public companies they analyze the private companies from the point of view of their investments uh, they cannot move up the hierarchy to become a private equity fund manager uh, that's that's a little drawback then you have an investment banking analyst so movement of the sell side analyst to the investment banking is slightly tough but not impossible sell side analysts are fully aware of the financial research modeling related to work so what they haven't worked uh, on its transaction related work is is like ipo filing documents pitch books registration works etc so if you're confused between investment banking and equity research there is a topic on the same you can work in the buy side firms now the sell side analysts sometimes are also absorbed as a buy side analyst working for mutual funds and the buy side analysts assume the responsibility of the fund managers over a period of time then you have the corporate finance that also is a part of c sell side analyst works a lot on the financial analysis analyzing the projects and its effects on the overall company's financial so hence they get a typical corporate finance roles of large corporates they take care of the financial analysis planning projects and so on and so forth another unique role is to get into the call as the investor relations so as a sell side analyst they get equipped with the faqs okay uh, on how to deal with the critical information and its sharing so due to this they have become an eligible for investor relation jobs also so well after this detailed discussion let me my, my final conclusion on this equity research essentially means preparing an estimate of the company the fair valuation of the recommendation on the buy side plans though as a research analyst you may spend around 12 to 16 hours a day at your office however there is a dream job for many who love finance and financial analysis so if you look at the work in challenging and dynamic environment then this is one career you must consider not only equity research jobs rewards analysts with relatively higher compensation but also it provides an excellent exit opportunities so that's it for this particular topic uh, i hope this was a comprehensive one if you have learned and enjoyed watching this video please like comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for all the latest updates thank you everyone once again for joining this session